Back in 2016, an Arizona State running back made college football history when he tied for the most touchdowns ever scored in one game. Against Texas Tech, Kalen Balaj scored eight touchdowns and cemented his name into the college football record books. He is seen as one of the better players in Arizona State football history and was a really solid kid, but how did he become a star to begin with and what happened to the legendary player? Today we're going to talk about the rise of Kalen Balaj, his record-breaking time at Arizona State, and what happened to his football career. But first, be sure to like the video if you enjoy my content, subscribe if you love college football, suggest another player I should take a look at next, and stay until the end. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Kalen Balaj. I've been having hood dreams, ball player, rap star, Billy Ben Tank, BMW, I ain't got no black on the dog face, two twin dogs and pick them shaking like a saw shake, ain't make it to the league, but I'm still falling, I was born for this, never thought I'd see the day when I could make it, should I go legit? Kalen didn't exactly grow up in a spot where he could blossom into a college football star as he was born in Denver, Colorado, but quickly moved to an unincorporated community known as Falcon. But football would run in the family and that would help him out a lot. When it came to football, there was no middle ground in the Balage family. It was always huge. Kalen's uncle was a four-year starting safety for Notre Dame and even played in the NFL for the Indianapolis Colts for a while. He also had two other uncles who both played college football for Colorado and football just seemed to run in the family. He said, quote, it was a good thing for me growing up, seeing them older than me and already doing what I wanted to do. I felt that from a young age. He later blossomed into one of the best athletes in the country as he became a star in high school and showed traits of being a future superstar. The highly sought after talent took official visits to Arizona State, UCLA, Washington, and Colorado, and he had sort of a soft commitment to Arizona State, but people were wondering if he would decommit and go elsewhere. Kalen said it went back and forth between Arizona State and UCLA, but in the end, he knew where he wanted to go. Many thought Colorado had a great chance at landing him because of his family's history, but it seemed like Kalen wanted to get out and do something else. On National Signing Day, the school was closed due to snow, but Balaj would end up becoming a Sun Devil and he would be headed down to Tempe, Arizona. According to scouts, Balaj played both running back and linebacker in high school, and he spent time in a few other positions as well. His versatility would suit any team well, and that's why Arizona State was so excited to get him into the program. He had rushed for 1,943 yards and 25 touchdowns as a senior, and coming from a small town like Falcon, he was never really expected to become a big-time player. According to 24-7 Sports, Kalen was a four-star recruit, the number 31 athlete, and the 329th best player in the class of 2014. He was seen as an athletic guy who could play running back and catch balls into the backfield, so he was going to have an instant impact at Arizona State. Going into his time at Arizona State, they were under head coach Todd Graham, and they had an up-and-coming offensive coordinator by the name of Mike Norvell, who we all know went on to coach at Memphis and now Florida State. They were coming off a 10-win season, and there were high expectations for the Sun Devils program. Marion Grice was just drafted into the NFL, so the team would need someone to step up at the running back position. Luckily, DJ Foster would step up as kind of an ultimate weapon for the team, as he rushed for over 1,000 yards and also had 600 yards receiving. Jalen Strong was the team's star wide receiver that year, and young running back Demario Richard became the team's backup guy, and he would kind of be a pain for Kalen for a little while. Balaj would appear sparingly his freshman year, but at the beginning it was a different story. He scored a touchdown in his first career game against Weaver State, and followed it up with two scores against New Mexico. He even caught a touchdown in their game against his uncle's alma maters in Colorado, but after that, he was sort of a non-factor. Sadly, things began not to go his way for the remainder of the year until the Duke game. He had a 96-yard kickoff return late in the game, and that would set up a game-winning touchdown, and they would beat Duke in the Sun Bowl. Balaj said, quote, it felt great. I told the seniors, I gotta do something. They helped me grow, and that's what was going through my head. I really wanted to do that for them. As a sophomore, Richard became the full-time starter, and his role would expand, while Balaj would still be the second guy. He went viral for a late run in their upset win over number 7 UCLA, but to this point, he was not very efficient when he got the ball. He had his first 100 plus yard rushing game in a triple overtime loss to Oregon, and then followed it up with 84 yards and a touchdown against Washington State. He then almost had 100 yards and two scores in a win over Washington, and then went for over 100 yards against their arch rival Arizona, and I would say this was the best stretch of his career. He was a non-factor in their loss to West Virginia in the Cactus Bowl, but Balazs had shown his potential by the end of the year. He finished with 653 yards and four scores, and many looked at him to break out in 2016. After a touchdown against Northern Arizona, he had a game that would cement his name into the college football history books. He somehow rushed for seven touchdowns against Texas Tech and caught another one in the passing game to tie the record for most touchdowns in a college football game ever. 
he was tied with Illinois fullback Howard Griffith, and out of nowhere, he became a household name. Texas Tech may have had one of the worst defenses in the country, but the record still holds, and he is a legend for that performance, as he only did it on 15 touches. He had great performances against UTSA, Oregon, and Washington State, but overall, the rest of his junior year was very eh, and kind of disappointing for the kind of talent he had shown against the Red Raiders. The Sun Devils did not make a bowl that year, and he finished with a disappointing 536 yards and 14 scores, but that number is severely inflated because of that one game. He came back for his senior year and was going to prove to the world he could be a future NFL running back. As a senior, he had five scores in his first six games, but he slowed down the rest of the year as he only had one in his final six contests. Besides a 100-yard game against Oregon State and 97 yards against UCLA, he did not do a whole lot and only got four carries in his final game in their bowl loss to NC State. As a senior, he rushed for 657 yards and six touchdowns, and based on the eye test, he was not seen as one of the top running back options in the 2018 draft. Except franchises saw a ton of potential in him, and a lot of people compared him to C.J. Anderson. He was drafted in the fourth round by the Miami Dolphins with the 131st overall pick, and he was going to have a chance to compete. This was based purely off potential and not college production, but he would get a chance to be a backup to Kenyon Drake if he worked enough. He did play very sparingly his rookie year, but towards the end, he got a chance to show his talent. He went for his best game as an NFL pro, as against the Vikings, he went for 123 yards and a touchdown, and he showed flash, but that was the highlight of his rookie year and would later be the best performance of his entire NFL career. He was the backup to Drake in 2019, but then Drake got traded, so Belage would get a chance to start six games. He was not overly impressive though, as he only had 135 yards and three touchdowns in that time frame, and he was later placed on IR. Before 2020, he was traded to the New York Jets, but he failed a physical. He eventually did sign with the Jets though, and learned a lot under legendary running back Frank Gore, and they apparently became good friends. He didn't stand much of a chance there though, and he was waived, but later was picked up by the Los Angeles Chargers, and he was on the practice squad, but did get activated for a couple games. At this point, it looks like he's on his way out of the league, and does not have much time to get it all together. The reason why I think Balazs has struggled in the NFL is because he has just not been able to use his physical tools to his capability, and he's also been on nothing but terrible teams where it's hard to succeed. Teams will continually give guys like this chances because of their physical traits, but he just doesn't know how to run the ball well or at an NFL level, and I just don't think Balazs is ever going to put it all together. He was sort of a one-game wonder, but it's a pretty fascinating story. What do you guys think of today's video though, and who should I do next? Let me know down in the comment section, and be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed my content, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and be sure to check out all my other What Happened To videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.